Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to give an overview on how I edit my YouTube videos using Final Cut Pro. If you want to see more videos about how I film and edit, subscribe to our channel and leave me a comment below if you have any specific questions I can answer for you in an upcoming video. There is no perfect way to edit, but I've learned that once you get into a routine and how you like to edit your videos, editing becomes faster and easier. First, to set up a new project, click on File, New, Library, and save whatever name you want to title it. So for this one, I'll say Hotel Beach Promo, hit Save. And then go back and click File, New Project. And I'll title it the same, Hotel Beach Promo. I have tried using 4K's format, but I just think it's so much easier to use 1920 by 1080. Because I love using slow motion in my videos, I shoot and edit my videos in 60 frames per second. So to upload footage, click on the upload button. Then I have a folder on my desktop. And then I'll copy and paste all of the clips that I have in this folder. Final Cut Pro will put everything in chronological order. And then I usually will copy and paste all of my clips by Command A and then put them all in the timeline at the same time. Some people prefer to go to each clip and find the highlight of each clip they want in the video. And you can do that by selecting the part of the clip that you want and dragging it in. But I prefer dragging everything into the timeline at the same time. I think it's a lot easier to edit to the music and adding slow motion and editing when everything is in the timeline. I then click on all clips and just highlight my favorites so all of the footage is not slowing my computer down, as well as going to view and going to better performance. Because I have all my clips in the timeline, it is sometimes hours of footage that can really slow down my computer. For the music I use on my YouTube videos, I have used the music subscription programs from Epidemic Sound and Artlist. I'm currently now only using Artlist because I think they offer a better selection of songs I really enjoy listening to. Artlist is $20 a month or $199 for the yearly subscription. You can use my link to sign up in the description box below to receive two months of music for free. Once I find a song that fits the mood of the video, I usually listen to the song once all the way through and then I drag from my desktop the song into the timeline. And then I just start dragging, deleting, and adding slow motion as I edit. There is so much trial and error that goes into editing and playing around with different ideas, so be patient and have fun with it. Five other quick editing tips that I'll share have really improved my editing this year. Number one, slow motion. This helps get that buttery, smooth, cinematic look. You can learn how to edit slow motion clips by watching my previous video here. Number two is speed ramping. So here's an example of speed ramping. So first I have this clip, it's normal speed, 100%, just how I filmed it in real life. And so on your keyboard, click on B for blade, and then find, so I wanna keep it normal right here, and then find where you want it to start going faster. So I'm gonna say all this faster until Brinley pulls down her sunglasses. So I'm gonna go right here. To go out of the blade setting, click on A, and then highlight the clip, and then go up to your retiming options, go down to fast, and I'm gonna say 20 times faster. And then from here, I can either go this way or to the left to retime it according to how I want to time it up to the music. So here's normal, here's my speed ramping, it's a little fast. I'm just gonna make that go a little bit longer, better, still a little bit too fast. There we go, I like that. I'm gonna stop it right here, so I'm gonna click on the keyboard B, 
And then all of this with Brinley, I think I will just delete that clip. So here was the final product from that speed ramping. Number three, watch Ryan Ningle's tutorials. He offers a lot of plugins and transitions for Final Cut Pro. I just bought his smooth transition package on my last video and I love the way it helped my footage look more cinematic. You can check out his website in the description box below. So the number one thing I recommend is to time your transitions with the beat of the music. So I added some motion blur right here. This transition is also from Ryan Ningle. So go check out his website. He has so many different options and they are very user friendly and just so easy to use. Number four, stabilization. I love using the stabilization feature in all of my clips, but here's a warning for you. Sometimes if the clip is very shaky, it'll distort the clip. So make sure you view it after you stabilize it. Number five, copy and paste. When I first started making videos, I tried to go to each clip and change the coloring and settings one at a time. Oh my goodness, you can just copy and paste the settings on your clip. Highlight a clip that you like, copy it, and then go to a clip you want to paste it on, click on edit, and then paste effects to paste all the settings, or click on paste attributes if you want to select which settings to paste. All right, let me know if you want to see more on how I film and edit in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy editing, and we'll see you in the next video.